know, Mr. President, that I approached you this morning to actually bring the same motion as a matter of urgent national importance. I approach you with every sense of responsibility, remembering so well that as a member of the Seventh National Assembly, the issue of Maena was extensively discussed and debated in the Senate. Resolutions were made, and as the matter appeared to heat up the polity, it got to an extent that the then Senate President, distinguished Senator David Bonaventure Mark, actually gave the then president, President Gulag Ebele Jonathan, the option to choose between loyalty to Maina and loyalty to the Constitution and respect for the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It got so bad. It got so bad because at that time, we were alarmed that a level 14 officer had more than 25 policemen guarding him day and night. It got so bad that every time the then president traveled, a level 14 officer was always in front row along with cabinet members even though he was not working in any area that had to do with protocol. And we felt that the office somehow, for whatever reasons of Abacadabra, had managed to take certain principalities in the federal government hostage to the extent that one of us was in fact blackmailed and lied against that he had received billions. And one of us stood up publicly and said, please, I'm not running away. Let Mena and myself face each other in any tribunal or court of justice in this land. At the end of it all, that colleague remain here, may not run away. In circumstances that today discredit the security apparatus of Nigeria. Of course, the more you look, the less you see, because rumors were washed that, that jet planes belonging to some principalities in the corridors of power were used to ferry him to a neighboring country. As far as we know, a warrant of arrest was issued for him. So if we will return to Nigeria, first and foremost, he has to present himself and he has to explain the charges that were publicly levied against him. Those charges remain unanswered, but tragically, as my colleague just reported, not only did he return, he returned to an elevated position. In other words, if you want to move from level 14 to level 16, all you have to do is commit sufficient egregious offenses such that you have to run out of reach and then return, find yourself not at the level of assistant director or of deputy director, but of substantive director in the public service of Nigeria. An insult to all the civil servants 
who were doing their job diligently during those years of my now running away. But for me, as a member of the APC, it's a sad moment. We cannot be saying we want to fight corruption and then we allow this kind of the more you look the less you see. Jesus Christ said that it is difficult for a rich man to pass through the needle's eye. But unfortunately, what we are seeing in Nigeria is more difficult for a rich man than for a horse to go to the news that in Nigeria, a horse, pregnant one, <laughs> carrying a hippopotamus, will pass through the needle's eye and dance Palongo all the way. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, this saddens me and I'm sure saddens all of us. I'm glad, I am glad yes, yes. that following the outrage of the public, that the president acted promptly to ensure a reversal of that awful decision. But we also know today that even at that we have read in the newspapers that rules of the Public Service Commission have been breached even by the president, who meant well. I'm sure he meant well. What is sure is that certain people in the executive have determined to make this president fail. Every member of my party who is here and every patriot who is here because we have only one president must ensure that this president does not fail because his failure affects all of us. And not to fail means that whoever is responsible for this terrible decision must account for it. The newspapers have it that two ministers are involved in this. The president owes this republic to make those ministers to answer. Corruption is not just about stealing money. Stealing money is awful. Every time we steal money, we hamper this republic. But the worst form of corruption is incompetence. If you don't, if you cannot fly a plane and you become a captain flying a jet, that's more awful than stealing money. So what we are saying is those who are in charge of security of this nation knows very well that may now was a wanted man. How did he get back? Live in Nigeria? Got reinstated? The police did not know. The SSS did not know. And the gurus of the public service, who now knew about the resettlement, will also pretend that they don't know. Something is wrong. So I hope that this Senate will not forget its past resolution on Mena. On those we still stand. And Mena must be brought to justice to account for every allegation against him. He is not the first person in Nigeria who has been alleged to be corrupt. Others have faced the court and have won and walked away. Let him also walk. Afterwards, we remember Oron Soye. Grave allegations were made against him. Same problem. He remained in Nigeria. 
He faced the court of the land. And he got exonerated by the court of the land. The least, the least that the man must do is to face a similar process. That is how we strengthen the rule of law. And that is what this village must support. Thank you, sir.